everybody to this uh, board meeting. Uh, we're still only missing Angie, um, so hopefully she'll find her way soon. Uh, but Samir uh, will be in attendance. Um, Denise will not be in attendance, and Mike Lamb will not be in attendance. So normally they're also they're on the boards, obviously. Uh, but we have quorum, so we can proceed. Um, this is this is an, an open board meeting, so we encourage all of you to have questions or to you know if you have anything to say, feel free to raise your hand and we'll um, you know, loop you in. Uh, the agenda for today is pretty simple. Um, we're going to do an operational update um, that will come from Holly. Um, we will have very quick discussion or, or updates from the different board committees. Um, that will only take five minutes. And then we're going to talk about the board election process. And then last but not least, there is an update on uh, Drupal 8 and how the Drupal Association is going to help with the marketing of Drupal 8 and the content strategy around it uh, specifically. So with that, I'll give the floor to Holly. Great. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone for showing up, staff included. Uh, and as Dries mentioned, it is an open board meeting and we get to do these twice a year and it's fun to have people in the room. So do feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, the operational update, we're covering the month of August in this board meeting. Um, and so uh, some of the highlights for us um, as of um, the release of the board packet, we had uh, the engineering team had knocked out all the release candidate blockers uh, for Drupal 8. So everything that on Drupal.org that was a release blocker for 8 coming out is now taken care of, which is fantastic. Um, there are a couple of housekeeping items for an actual Drupal 8 release as follow-ups, but those are on track as well, and we feel really good about that. Um, and we also uh, launched a new pilot program uh, at the end of the summer called Camp Connect. Um, and if you folks are familiar with the WordPress community, one of the things that they do for their camps is uh, help support those local camps by doing uh, fundraising, sponsorship fundraising uh, for camps, and then giving the money out to the camps so that they can, they don't have to worry about that part. Uh, so we're piloting a program for camps, some of the camps in the Q4 uh, time frame, the fourth quarter. Uh, they opted in to be part of the program. Uh, we are working with sponsors who want to uh, pull their money through the DA and, and hand that out to camps. So uh, we're piloting that in Q4 and uh, we've gotten lots of positive response both from camps and from sponsors and uh, if that goes well we'll start to offer that out to camps more broadly in the future. Um, that was a fun one too. Some camps, you know, didn't want to participate. They've got their sponsorship stuff down. They're they're great. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, but I think especially for newer camps, this will be a right a nice service and it'll help generate more uh, community engagement all over the globe. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, on the things to watch list, um, mid year progress to mid year adjustment. So again, in uh, the month of June, we did do um, a retrenchment for the association. Um, revenue was not coming in as planned, although it is up year over year. It wasn't what we wanted it to be. Um, and so we have a new plan, a new financial plan for the rest of the year, and we're watching that progress. Um, some things are doing fine, and some things continue to, uh, you know, be be very slow and soft. Uh, and so, that's an area where we are putting a lot of attention. And you know, basically every couple of weeks, we've got updates there and are making adjustments. Uh, so. That is something that we're watching. An additional thing that we launched this year as a pilot program is a co-marketing campaign uh, for, for Europe in particular. Um, we uh, purchased a booth space at two European marketing events, the Mexico, which just happened in Cologne, Germany, um, and the Festival of Marketing in London, which makes me laugh. It's a <laughs> festival of marketing. I don't know. There's something hilarious about that to me. But, um, like, is there a Ferris wheel? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. Um, I love it, though. Anyway, so we got booth space at both those events um, and, and have uh, invited European shops to uh, basically come in uh, on that space with us. 
so that we can represent Drupal and not just the shops at the event. So it's you know a way to get the the Drupal brand name out there a little more strongly. Um, and we had moderate participation from the shops. Um, some of them had already purchased their own space, but Mexico, for example. Um, some people just weren't sure what, what they might get out of it, uh, but we'll finish out that program this year and see uh, what kind of um, benefits it does generate for the community, uh, and then we'll, we'll look forward, but we're watching that right now. Um, and then just a low light overall with sponsorship revenue for this DrupalCon, which was much lower than um, anticipated and also lower uh, than we received for Amsterdam. Um, and so that was definitely a tough one. Um, a big part of that was that we did have um, we did have one sponsor who had a, a very big presence here and ch you know just ch changed strategic direction. It didn't really make sense as a, a tool for them anymore. Um, and uh, you know we just didn't replace that revenue. That was a big part of it. Um, and then we always see in the European cons there's a lot of regionality. So uh, if you don't do business in Spain. Uh, you know, you're not as interested in being a sponsor, and just the the business community uh, in Spain was not as robust as we saw in Amsterdam, right? So um, that definitely affected sponsorship income. Um, on the positive side for this con, though, I, you know, I will say um, we had uh, we ended up meeting the registration goal that we thought we would get for this con. So we've had about 2,050 to 2,100 people register for this con. So we feel like it's a good community representation here. Um, it's not as big as Amsterdam, which was 2,300, but it's much bigger than Prague, which is about 1850. Um, and you know, that just, I think speaks to location as a driver for con attendance, uh, in particular, but we feel like there's a good, strong community turnout here and we're really pleased with that. So it's a little light, but I ended with a highlight cause that's what I do. Um, <laughs> that's the operational update. Any questions about that from anyone? Then we'll do the, um, the board committee. We'll start with the revenue. Um, this is Ed and the governance committee. We did not need this, uh, this past week. Right. The finance committee. Finance committee met as a committee of the whole during the board retreat to review the financials. And uh, the, exec, the exec committee, I'll, I'll speak to them. Um, so we did meet with Molly to um, follow up on the two-day board retreat that we had earlier this week. And we got aligned on, on action items and next steps. And then the marketing committee. No meeting, as far as I know. Okay. Another meeting? They did not meet. Um, <laughs> all right. Any questions on that? This is meant to be short. <laughs> but if there's questions. Um, all right. The next item is the um, election process. Awesome. I'll talk again. <clears throat> all right. So. I like to talk about this uh, here uh, in particular, but uh, the community elections will be coming up uh, in 2016 fairly shortly. Um, and so uh, we're going to start talking about it now in the community and helping people who might be interested in running, um, you know, learn more about what that means um, and give them the information they need to run. So that's the point here. Uh, it's more informational than really, you know, weigh in. But, you know, if you've got things to weigh in on, let me know. So here's the process we've got mapped out. Um, we're going to talk about what the board does just quickly. Uh, if you guys have color commentary around that, please do add to it. Deal with your snarky executive director. Only if it's colorful. No boring commentary. Yep. <laughs> All right, that's great. Sure, it's a circus here. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Uh, we'll talk about how nominations in the elections process works, who can run and how they run, uh, what you'll need to do, um, and then we'll look at the 2016 elections process, not the 2015. So, so what does the board do? Um, one of the things I just want to emphasize is that as a board of the association, um, you know, we 
we represent um, on the board, uh, or you guys represent on the board, um, a lot of different interests. So the community has like 33,000 really active developers on any given day. Uh, there's only, you know, there's a million Drupal sites. We have 12% of the top 100,000 of those sites. Uh, oh, it's now over 3,000 Drupal 8 contributors. Uh, my point being that um, it's a very large constituency that the association tries to help represent the interests of. So we have, um, it's not just a lot of people, but people with an incredible variety of experiences that they're bringing to their to the association. So, you know, you could be a front-end developer, a back-end developer, a themer, uh, you know, you could be from Bulgaria, you could be from South America, right? Uh, so we have just all kinds of diversity that we're dealing with um, on any given day. Um, and yet, uh, at the end of the day, what the association the board try to do is represent the community, right? So it's a challenge. Um, but to help try to address some of that diversity, the board composition um, does that a little bit. So we have three different kinds of directors at the association. Um, there is the founding director, or Dries. Uh, he's the only one that can be the founding director. Um, and the board has to reelect him every year for a one-year term to serve as the founding director. That seat can be empty. Um, theoretically, you could be voted off, Dries. Yeah, uh, but uh, but uh, we <laughs> we really like them every year. Then we have class directors, um, and class directors serve three years terms, and those are folks who are nominated by the nominating committee and then are uh, approved by the rest of the board. Um, and every year we have a new class of directors that are opened up to be um, either reconfirmed or uh, new directors that are brought in. And then we have the at-large directors, um, and this is where the community representation um, can also come in. Uh, in the class directors, we often think about, uh, you know, uh, what's the mix of people who are on the board, uh, uh, what skills do they have, but also what communities do they represent. <coughs> and when openings come up, it's a good chance to try to rethink, like, is there someone, is there another uh, skill set or is there another uh, community demographic that we want to represent on the board? With the at-large directors, uh, you guys in the community get to make that happen. So folks nominate themselves to run. Um, we never, we elect one person every two years, um, and the community gets to make that decision. So our two current at-large directors are Addison and Matthew. Um, and Matthew's term is about to expire, so that's why we're having another election. So this is our mission. The goal of the board is to support that mission, see that mission come to pass. So um, you've got some duties as a board member to do that. Um, and these are the, uh, uh, these are U.S. Uh, laws uh, around board, uh, what board responsibilities are. Um, and the reason we follow that U.S. law is because the association is incorporated in the United States. So that's where we're uh, bound to. But there are three legal duties. Duty of care. So you actually have to participate, you know, look at the financials when they're sent to you and, you know, listen when Holly's talking, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. True story. Good luck. <laughs> yep. Uh, there's a duty of loyalty. There's a duty of loyalty. Um, and this one's interesting because we do have a lot of folks with varied, uh, you know, professional interests on the board, but when you're, when you're putting your board hat on to do board work, right, you put the association above everyone else. Yeah. Um, and then a duty of obedience. Um, and that is not obedience to the organization or the executive director, as it turns out. That's a uh, duty of obedience uh, to the law, right? Uh, which in this case is, you know, U.S., Oregon, um, and local, local laws for us. Um, and what that means is that, um, you know, if a board member becomes aware that we're doing something illegal, they have to do something about it, right? So you are, you're on the hook for that. So those are the legal duties, but practically what ends up happening is that the board spends, uh, you know, a fair amount of time overseeing the financial performance. Um, so when things are smooth sailing, um, there's a monthly review of the finances by the finance committee, uh, and they make a recommendation quarterly to the full board for approval of the financials. Um, uh, setting strategy with Staff is something we also do. So the staff will come to the board and say, this is the direction that we think that we should head in, and here's our evidence for why. Um, and the board weighs in with um, thoughts like, please, 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 please don't do that um, sometimes, or that looks great, right? So that's their job is to advise on that. 
Um, setting and reviewing policies, and this relates to that duty of obedience. So making sure that our financial and human resources policies are compliant with law, you know, labor laws, but also that they can, you know, that's what you guys actually have to approve. Um, but you know, you also help us make sure those are in line with our values. Um, fundraising is something that boards typically do as well, so raising money for organizations. Um, and we haven't done a ton of that in the past, but you all did a tremendous job of helping us uh, meet our D8 Accelerate goals. Thank you for that. Um, and then the board is my boss. So if you've never had 12 bosses before or had the chance to be one of 12 bosses for someone else, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> all right. The work of this is to attend a minimum of ten of a minimum of ten of the twelve monthly board meetings. The board meets once a month. It's it's a two hour meeting. There's a one hour public session and a one hour um, executive session. Uh, we have three strategy and planning retreats. So we'll do one in January and then uh, one around each of the North American and European cons. Uh, and you're expected to sit on at least one board committee, and the committees do typically do more of the actual work, right? So you're going to spend probably five hours or more a month on the board. Does that sound good, familiar to you guys? Okay. So if we haven't scared you away yet and you're interested, how do nominations and elections uh, work? Just to let you know, there is a whole history around this. The community themselves discussed the, pro uh, the process that we were going to go through and um, and defined what that was going to be like. Um, in 2014, we revised the bylaws just to change the election process up to that staggered two-year term uh, for each of the directors. It had been a one-year term for the community elected seats, but you know it really does take some time in any group to you know become part of the team uh, and to figure out what's going on, no matter how good your onboarding is. And so we wanted to give everyone more time to serve. Um, and then, if you care, it's the election module that we use. Someone cares here. All right. How do we do this? So if you're interested, uh, when we have uh, when we open self-nominations, there'll be a form to fill out. Um, the key is you have to nominate yourself. You cannot nominate another person to run. Uh, we'll publish that time period uh, a couple weeks long to nominate yourself. Um, and we do ask you to share some information about yourself, a bio, like why do you want to run, do you have some relevant experience, et cetera, your photo. Uh, none of these... Um, very few fields are actually required, I think, beyond your D.O. username. So um, I know there are folks out there who are concerned about um, putting too much personal info out there, and that's fine. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that we will ask for, and I you know, feel like the more that you can share, the better position you're in. So once you nominate yourself, we have a period where uh, folks can uh, – uh, you know, have conversations with you. And then we, when we get to the election, the key thing is that we use instant runoff voting. So we don't do a majority vote. We use instant runoff process. And if you Google that, uh, you'll get a great British YouTube video that involves many post-its. Uh, and they explain the process really, really well. Um, uh, and uh, voting is open itself for about a week. Um, and voting is open to anyone who's had a Drupal.org account um, in the past year. And you had to have registered your account prior to the nomination. That's the bit that gets cut off on this slide. So if you have a D.O. account before nominations open, um, then you can vote. All right. Who can run? Anyone can run. Right. Um, so anyone can definitely be part of it. And I, I think we do our best to onboard new board members and help them understand what's going to happen. But I think um, board service is much easier if you've had a, some other kinds of experience before. So if you've been on another kind of board, uh, if you, particularly if you're good at reading financial documents, that's something we do a lot of. Um, if you've been on a community committee within Drupal, then um, you are accustomed to how you know committees work and the board is essentially a committee. Um, strategic planning is great because that's the kind of level that we try to have discussions at. Not down in the implementation details, but what's the direction we're heading? That's the kind of discussion we try to have at the board level. Um, and then policy development because that comes up as well. And again, you just have to nominate yourself um, and we'll publish that nomination form when the nomination period is over. As a candidate, just to give you a sample of what a nomination uh, form looks like, um, what you'll have on that page is a Q&A section. Uh, so as a candidate, your job is to answer questions that are posed by the community. 
Um, we will have a Meet the Candidates webcast. We'll have several of those that you can participate in. It's a good chance to um, field questions from the community as well. Um, and then we definitely encourage you to promote your candidacy through social channels. It's a really good way to um, spread the word about the elections in general um, as well, which we love to see happen. So the timeline for folks who are interested, nominations are going to open on February 1st. So it's a few months off, but if you're thinking about it, um, that's when your target date is. Uh, then we'll have a couple of weeks of Meet the Candidate. So nominations will be published on the 19th or the 20th. And then we'll have um, Meet the Candidate sessions and that open Q&A period on your candidate pages. We'll vote March 7th through the 18th. Um, and then we'll be able to communicate everything out on March 25th. So there will be a few days of lag between um, voting closing and us getting the announcement out. Um, and that's only because we have to get the board together to ratify the results. Um, you know, it's not technically challenging. It's just to <laughs> convening people. So we'll get that out. Um, so that's the, the timeline. And that is it. So... Any questions? Or I know we have some folks in the room, uh, Chris and Schnitzel. You guys have run before. Any advice for folks? No. Write a good bio. Yeah. Oh, there's Chris. Gotcha. Any questions about that? Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I did a lot of secondary explanation around the Yeah, well. Okay, so just a block that says, here's what the process is, and here's where we are in the process. Okay, that's good feedback. And we're actually meeting in a couple of weeks to have our first, to write some stories up for that process, so that's good. Other thoughts or questions or feedback? <coughs> okay. All right, thank you. The next item is the an update on the Drupal 8 release plan. Yes, and for board members who don't know Phil, let me introduce uh, Phil <clears throat> Boulevard, who's our communications manager. This might be the first time you've gotten to see him in person. And Phil, I'm going to operate Phil's slides, but he's going to wink at me when I'm supposed to forward them. Not. Okay. Right, That's so more appropriate. Not. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to give out a quick uh, shout out to Bradley Fields. He's our uh, content manager. Um, he's a very bright young man. Everyone should meet him if they can. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Holly asked me to put together this presentation about how we can uh, communicate um, and help uh, support the release candidate and then the later Drupal 8 uh, version release. And so I said, sure, I'd love to. Sounds fun. Um, and, uh, Plus the terrifying. I, <laughs> the reason I said it with such uh, enthusiasm is because I knew that Bradley had already been working on this for our team um, for over a month. So thank you, Bradley, for letting me use a lot of your work in this uh, presentation. And um, I also want to say that this presentation is mostly focused on the upcoming uh, release candidate, but it's um, easily extrapolated when we're closer to the version release. So we have a release candidate. It's almost here. Um, and the thing uh, we want to do at the association is really celebrate the work um, that's been done so far and to get ready for the work that's starting to come. Um, and there's some big ideas that we want everyone to know about. And those big ideas are that it's here. It makes Drupal better than ever. It'll help you create better. Uh, people are doing great things with it right now. Um, even more people plan to get involved soon. And we want people to try it out and tell other people about it. Okay, so these are your base messages. Yes, exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, the way the Drupal Association can share these ideas are through, or that we plan to uh, share these ideas, is through four kinds of content. So going down the uh, left column, uh, the kinds of content are awareness, research and education, comparison and validation, and choice. And if you go uh, now horizontally, um, the purpose for awareness would be we want to make it clear that the release candidate is uh, available, and the big idea that would tie to that is here. 
um, on research and education. It's we want people to learn um, about the features and how those features can be used. Um, and the big ideas would be it makes Drupal better than ever. People are doing great things with it now, and even more people plan to get involved soon. Um, on the comparison and validation, we want people to be able to evaluate whether it's going to be a good fit for them. Uh, the big ideas are it makes Drupal better than ever, and it will help you create better choice. We want uh, people to choose and promote choosing Drupal 8. Uh, the big ideas are try it out and tell other people. <clears throat> um, our plan is to use uh, different initiatives for each kind of content. So same chart, just kind of adding another column on the right around the initiatives. Um, and the reason uh, awareness and choice are bolded here is because really that's where the Drupal Association um, has the, uh, the ability and the resources to focus. Uh, we'll talk more about research and education and um, comparison and validation a little later. Um, so uh, awareness, jumping over to the far right column, uh, the initiatives uh, that we plan to use to support this would be news articles on, or a news article, excuse me, on Drupal.org, um, updates on our social platforms, email newsletters, and um, specific email announcements uh, to our uh, email list. On the choice, um, we, uh, see, oh yeah, download Drupal 8 calls to action where we can. All over the site. All over the place. Mm -hmm. And so where we could really use some help from the community, um, do the, you know, push this out there, is uh, through all of these various types of content that, um, that are available to the community. Um, so blog posts, tutorials, testimonials, case studies, collateral, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we have all kinds of different ways um, that the community can help us. Uh, help us. <laughs> <laughs> Silly community. <laughs> yeah. That won't be just that won't be disarming at all, Philip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, where they could really help us out is, is focusing on those other two uh, types of communication, research and education. Do you want to talk a little bit what, about why those that those are specifically well uh, positioned for the community as opposed to the association? It, it's really about resources uh, as, and. Um, also, just the, uh, the reach and the, the connection that they have through their clients um, mm -hmm. and through the people that they work with. And, and you know, we take a look at the initiatives, um, the things that we can really, where they really have the power are around case studies um, mm -hmm. and uh, where the community has the power is around case studies, around video. It's just uh, the, the, you know, more resources and more volume of content. That, that mm -hmm. I could say too, the, the recent changes to the marketplace have actually highlighted case studies in a much more prominent way on uh, the marketplace listing and uh, one of the seven component models to highlight the work that the company does itself. So I think that's a real key for us getting better case studies out there, particularly case studies in the community. Yeah, great point. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, uh, initiatives are where the community can really help um, tutorials, um, testimonials from clients about how uh, V8 is, is uh, going and working for them, um, and blog posts about V8 versus V7 so that um, we can promote the uh, additional features. And then on comparison and validation, so blog posts about solving com common challenges, um, targeted emails to uh, their client bases, um, webinars around specific uh, industries and verticals, and launch parties. Um, so Talk about, or I'll talk about that more a little later. Is anyone going to host a launch party? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all, right. all right. So uh, one of the things we'd like to do is, is figure out how we can unite all of these efforts. Um, and obviously social is a great way. And so what we would like to do is start using Drupal 8 RC1, uh, hashtag Drupal 8 RC1, through all of our social channels and, and ask the community to do the same. Um, um, and then also, hashtag around uh, made with Drupal 8 for celebrating specific projects. And those are two ways that we can really kind of aggregate and be able to um, search for content uh, more easily across all the various social channels. And then um, there's a group, for those of you who don't know, on Drupal uh, groups.drupal.org, Drupal 8 production sites. So if we could get people to share their stories about Drupal implementations um, in that particular group, then again, a great way to aggregate all of the content that's out there. <coughs> And then also, when uh, people are on Drupal.org, creating content, tagging that with Drupal 8 RC1, um, and then also directing media to our upcoming news article on Drupal.org. And then translaciones, por favor. I hope I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Good job. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, everything that the Drupal Association will produce will be um, Creative Commons, so please take advantage of it um, and use it. And then also, um, I spoke with Kieran uh, yesterday, and he showed me the D7 um, pages that were created and, and all the translations were, that were done there. So we'll be reaching out to, to have that done as well um, as we to, to our group away. And then, as we said, plan to have a large party, um, and we will help spread the word. Uh, so we created a landing page. Drupal 8 launch party in the association. It's a web form where people can go, give us some information. We will collect that information as we get closer. Um, we will start to um, uh, promote that, promote those parties. And again, Kieran gave you some great ideas as to how we can do that. And of course, test, test, test. Um, the faster we get through the RC1, the faster we get to the version release. And that's it. So that's the page where all the good stuff will go. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you like it. I know. Drupal hyphen 8.0 for nerds, right? <laughs> that URL <are> for nerds. <laughs> yes, you do. The, the, the magic, the marketing URL does open up to the nerd URL. It's true. <laughs> Good redirect. Any questions about the, the marketing plan there or uh, <laughs> ideas that we should be considering? Yes, yeah, Schnitzel. Uh, That's a good point. Maybe we should just call it RC um, at this point. But RC hex. Okay. I wrote it I down. Thank you. Anything ahead you said about the celebration, what, which has basically come out of the, of the session about the contribution and showing who did it. And I was wondering. And um, all that was shown was about what Drupal 8 can do for you. It didn't show anything about who actually did it. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if there is anything that emphasizes on who the people actually working on it. Or if there's like a list or a link that people can say like, hey, I was part of that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Let's let me take yeah. that yeah. idea down and work on it. Yeah. We talked about building trust kits for yeah, that's a great idea. I like that too. Maybe a little badge to wear, something like that. Yeah. That'd be a good block on the eight landing page. It's just a rotating thing of contributors, right? Yeah. Okay, you work on that. That can be your community contribution. <laughs> yeah, it's your idea. I guess who gets to do it? You didn't learn that yet. All right. And you had you had a thought also. Yeah. Yeah. Look what I read in the paper. Go do it, staff. Right? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so I was nodding, but the answer is no, uh, except for it might be yes. Uh, so let me explain, which is, um, <laughs> yep. yeah, let me try that again. So what I mean is currently, we do have a small press list currently, uh, and so we'll definitely push out to these journalists that we've already interacted with in the past for um, various V8 related announcements. Um, but we don't have a big, broad list. Uh, and 
we definitely know that that's a hole, um, and that usually gets filled by some of the bigger companies in the space. Um, that said, um, I did just get a couple of contacts last week um, uh, for uh, some PR agencies that have done some open source software work in the past. Um, so it's possible we might get some low cost or free uh, resources to help do some PR work for the for the release. But that'll be the big. We, we'll do that at the um, not the RC stage, but at the actual release. So yeah. So hopefully yes. Uh, but I, I, you know, I think Drupal will be fairly well represented, uh, but it'd be nice to be able to push that out from, from the association uh, more strongly, for sure. Well, small detail. Um, but I think in the hashtag, I think it would be useful to put, uh, instead of DA, do Drupal. Do Drupal, because okay. I think was kind of people see that on a feed out of context, so okay. DA doesn't promote Drupal. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah. The other idea was maybe it's useful to have sort of a uh, messaging matrix for different audiences. Okay. And just an idea like, you know, here's the key things for developers to know, here's the key things to know for. You know, we have yeah, authors we, we the do, site as a whole, yeah. but we haven't done it specifically for yeah. Drupal 8. So we could take what we have for yeah. our messaging matrix and apply it. Yeah, the landing page already has has some of that, I think, but we can certainly expand on it and or maybe simplify it and create, you know, kind of. No, but yeah. part of this press kit idea, like, yeah. Yeah. So how, you know, can we give the key messages to everybody yeah. for them then to take in their blog posts or whatever? Yeah. 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 Okay. Anything else on that? Uh, yes. Yep, that is we, definitely on our radar. Yeah, we, we actually <laughs> talked about that, and I talked to Carrie about how we can, you know, get ahead of that with yeah. the partners that she has on that. So, yeah. yeah, we've definitely had conversations with a couple partners already, but we'll. Um, I think that'll be. Uh, that's been a very successful program for us in terms of getting people to actually, you know, install Drupal in a trial environment. Um, and so get, I think, uh, uh, we'll get lots of eyeballs on Drupal, at, Drupal 8 that way. Yeah. Anything else? Any, any questions outside of the things we discussed? <coughs> okay. So, um, billboards, buses. What did I say about billboards, Donna? <laughs> I'm drawing. Single reason. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if I billboard, it might be a good <laughs> One of those guys. Just, yeah. <laughs> I think we I've always wanted one of those balloons, yeah. you know, yeah. those guy yeah. balloons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think I, I just want to fully reiterate the um, translation thing. It really was, it, there was some real excitement around that in the Drupal space in terms of people reaching out and kind of doing it. And I, I, even I, monolingual as I am, was aware of that and it was something where people were getting excited. So I think that is something in the big ways that we can kind of really embrace the technology beyond yeah. our. Yeah, I mean, getting the announcements in early, getting it out to people to help translate, and then um, making those available, I think, is going to be really great. Yeah. So, okay, good. Well, I think we have one official, unofficial order of business to take care of. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 well, I'm to this um, we are talking about core burnout, and so I need to stay at it. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. That's okay. okay. Uh, Tiffany? So, Andy's last public, well, in person public forum meeting, and he had done obviously yeoman's work for the project and for the association for six, four years, and <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Speaking of burnout. <laughs> and so, uh, we just wanted to publicly say thank you to you all. And this is a new public meeting for you. I <laughs> can't! <laughs> Thank you, Angie.
Thank <laughs> you. 